Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Camp's C++ Quickies. Um, today we're going to be talking about, or in this video, we're going to be talking about input and output in C++. Now here we've set up our C++ program with the, the standard uh, beginning setup. We've got a pound include IO stream. We're using namespace standard so we don't have to stick std colon colon in front of a lot of our operators. And we have the int main function where everything is going to happen. Okay. Uh, now, first we're going to talk about input. So let's say we have string name. Okay. Um, and we want to read in someone's name and, and write in. Uh, so we're going to give a prompt statement. Um, What is your name? Leave a space after the question mark so that it looks nice. Uh, we're not going to put an end line there. We're just going to stop. And we're going to see in uh, name. OK. Um, then we're going to put another C out statement. Um, hello, name. exclamation point, end line. Okay, let's see how this program runs. Um, starts up a little terminal window. What is your name? James Camp. Hello, James. Now, why did it not say, hello, James Camp? That's the name I typed. Uh, the answer is that the CN operator scans for a space. It scans for any kind of white space, a space character, a tab character, a carriage return, um, and it stops reading when it gets to a first space. Now I can use this. Um, type your first name and last name. Okay. So I can change my strings to first name and last name. So I can go CN first name. And a neat trick with CN is that it can read multiple values from a single line. So it can go first name and then last name. OK. And then maybe I want to put them out in last name, comma, first name order. Welcome to my class, last name, comma, first name, the way it would look on a, a student role sheet, maybe. Okay, so we run it this time. I said, what is your first name and last name? James Camp. It says, welcome to my class, Camp James. Okay. Um, so that's excellent. That's doing exactly what we wanted it to do. Um, press any key to close this window. Okay. Um, we can do some fun things with that. Um, we can declare... Um, you know, I want to come back to this program. So if you remember, multi-line comments in C++ have a, uh, begin with a slash start and with a star slash. So you can surround a bit of perfectly good C++ code with a slash star at the beginning and a star slash at the end. And that's called commenting out that section of code. That means that code will not run next time I run my program. So int top, bottom, character, middle. Okay, now I can say this 
bit of code reads a fraction and converts to a decimal. Okay, so int so C out type a fraction as num slash denom. Okay. Uh, CN top, middle, bottom. What do you expect is going to happen? Well, we're going to type one number here, a slash, and another number. The first number is going to go to top. The slash is going to go to this character middle. We're just going to throw it away. And the bottom goes to, or the second number goes to the bottom. Okay, now I could have called this numerator and denominator. That would have been maybe more. Um, so double decimal equals top divided by bottom. So let's see what happens when we run that. Oh, and I have to see out it, right? Okay. See out top. over bottom equals decimal end line. What did I do wrong? I got all my operators backwards. We're doing C outs, not C ins. It's stupid little stuff like this that will get you when you first do your when you first learn to program in C++, and even in my case, when you've been programming for years. Okay. So now I run this and I say three fourths. Three fourths equals zero. Wait a minute. We're doing integer math, remember? An integer divided by an integer always comes out as an integer. So what we have to do is typecast this Double top over double bottom. Okay. Now when I run this, three over four point seven five. Okay. Not hard. Uh, let's say I wanted to do uh, seven over nine point seven 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 eight. Okay. Um, want to come back to that in a little bit and talk about uh, do the famous uh, 11 sevenths 1.57143 uh, sorry it's 22 sevenths 3.14286 okay close to pi but not really pi um, okay so we want to come back to that in a minute when we talk about precision. So now I'm going to comment out this little bit of code. And come back to my string example. Now there's a problem here. Uh, sometimes you don't want to read in one word at a time. Okay. Um, if I typed, what is your favorite movie title? Uh, I could do first word, last word, but that assumes that every movie title has exactly two words, which is not, as we know, true. So what I can do instead is there's a function called get line. You tell it where to get the line from, which is C in, and then you give it a string a a string uh, a 
So apparently, GitLine lives in basic iStream namespace. So what we have to do here is say standard basic iStream git line. That doesn't make sense. That's not. Oh, okay. Actually, git line lives in the string library and I forgot to pound include string. I'm not sure why it's been allowing me to use string uh, type variables without the string library, but I guess this compiler lets you be lazy about that. Um, so now it should work. Um, I would like to see movie title. Okay. So now when we run this, it says, what is your favorite movie title? Night of the Living Dead. That's not my favorite movie, but it's a good title. Okay. I would like to see Night of the Living Dead. Okay. So you see this time it read the whole string, including all the spaces in the middle, and spit it out as I would like to see that. Um. You can also get one character at a time. Um, if you were to try, if we defined a character, character throwaway, and I said type any character to continue, Okay. Um, or hit any key to continue, say. Um, then, what is your favorite movie title? Um, Let's say, I'll pick a chick flick this time. Runaway Bride. Okay, I would like to see Runaway Bride. Hit any key to continue. I hit return. It does not continue. I hit return again. It does not continue. I hit space and return. It does not continue. I have to actually type a printable character for CN to get anything. What if instead we, did, we used cn.get? This works a lot like git line, but it gets one character at a time from the keyboard, even if it's white space. So if I run it this way, what is your favorite movie title? Um, a Knight's Tale, love that movie. Hit any key to continue. I hit return and it takes the carriage return character as a valid character, okay? That can also be useful if you've done a lot of CN operations and you want to clear the trailing return key before you do a git line. So if I did see out what is your first name, CN first name, okay going to get mad at me because I haven't defined first name. Okay, let's see what happens here. What is your first name? James. See, it, it left the trailing return key, carriage return character, new line character in the buffer. So what I have to do here is now before I do any kind of a get line, I have to cn.get and I can actually do it without any parameter 
and it will just automatically throw away that character for me. So what is your first name? Jimbo. What is your favorite movie title? Rednecks in Paradise. Okay, hit any key to continue. Okay, so there we go. Um, that's uh, that's how you use git line and cn.git. Those are useful when you're doing any kind of string inputs where you maybe don't want to ignore spaces or, or stop every time there's a space. Okay. Right now, um, I'm done with this, and I'm moving back to uh, here. Um, so type three fractions as num over denom. Okay, so we're going to do top one, top two, top three, bottom one, bottom two, bottom three. And so we're going to actually put an end line here and Top one, middle, bottom one. We're going to read three of these in a row. Top two, top three. Bottom two, bottom three. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to print out uh, C out. Okay, we can always use the slash in character to add an extra new line there. Um, uh, numerator, use the tab key. Denominator, use the tab key. Decimal. Okay. Um, so for each C outline, I'm going to now do top one, stick in a tab character, bottom one, stick in a tab character, and, um, then I'm going to do double double cast of top one over bottom one because I only have to cast one of them in line. Okay. So note that I don't have to store the decimal version as a a file I can as a variable first I can do the calculation right here in the C out statement okay make sure my two and two and my three and three match oh two three two three okay so I'm going to run this and see what happens now three fractions I'm going to do one I'm going to do three fourths. Then I'm going to do three sevenths. And then I'm going to do seven elevenths. Okay. Now note, we've got um, things aren't lining up right. Okay. This is not like a word processor where it sets tabs every so often and everything lines up. A tab character just inserts a a certain number of spaces really between uh, between inputs. Um, and we didn't get the same number of decimal points out of them, but that's okay. Maybe we don't need this many points of, uh, of precision. Maybe we do. Maybe we want more. Um, so there are some things we can tweak here. 
Okay. The first thing we can tweak is we can set the width in characters of each of these fields so that we make sure that they line up. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if I stick in a set width 11, okay, I gotta, I'll just see out my new line character on a separate line here. So if I do sit with 11 numerator, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I set with 13 here to give it a couple extra spaces. And I set with decimal is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll give him nine, give him some couple extra spaces there, decimal in line. Now it's telling me set width is not known. That's because I have another pound include I need to do. These are IO manipulation functions. So IO manip is what this is, what this comes from. Okay, so now I need to copy my set width 11 down here and get rid of my tab characters. Okay, replace my tab characters here with the set width 13. And the next one's with a set width 9. And now let's see if these line up nicely. Okay. Uh, one third, one fifth, one seventh. Okay. So numerator lines up nicely. Denominator lines up nicely. Decimal, not so much. So I've got six places of precision plus a zero and a dot. So it's actually longer than the word decimal. So maybe I want to set these to 11 to match my first one here. Okay, type three fractions. This time we'll do two thirds, two fifths, and two sevenths. And there you see we get 66667.4.285714. They all line up nicely. Um, they're still longer than the word decimal. Okay. Maybe that bothers us. Maybe it doesn't. Okay. But they look nicely spaced out. Um, if it does bother us that these are a little longer than the word decimal, we can use the set precision value from um uh, operator here so you have to feed that to see out set precision and the default is six let's say we want uh four decimal places of precision okay um so now we can actually possibly take these back to nine Okay, and when we run it, okay, two thirds, two fifths, two sevenths. See, it gives us this time only four numbers after the decimal point or less. Okay, it won't pad out automatically to that many decimals. Um, so this is. Uh, this is good, right? Um, what if I put in some fractions that uh, have numerators? Okay, so we'll do five sevenths, 12 sevenths, 
and 22 sevenths. And you see we get four decimal places after the decimal point here because it start has a leading zero. We get three after and one before with decimal, okay, with the ones that have a numerator. Is that what we want? Well, it depends. If we're doing scientific calculations where a number of significant figures is important, this is exactly what we want. We want it to tell us exactly how many significant figures there are. If what we want, on the other hand, is to have exactly four places afterward, we can use the fixed operator. And that puts it in what's called fixed point notation. Five sevenths, 12 sevenths, 22 sevenths. And this time it means, ex you know, fixed notation means exactly the same number of decimals after the decimal point, And it'll le leave as many as it needs in front of the decimal point. Uh, okay. So those are some important ways to manipulate your I.O. so that it looks nice in, in formatted output um, and some interesting ways to, to use your input. We're going to end there, and the next uh, video will be on process logic.